April of 2015, shots were fired into the tour bus of multi-platinum rapper Lil Wayne. No one was hit, but the shots definitely seemed and meant to do more than just scare the rapper, who was embroiled in a massive legal battle with his record label Cash Money at the time to the tune of $51 million. Universal Music Group had advanced Birdman and Cash Money $100 million. Young Money Records, which was Lil Wayne's uh, sub-record label under Cash Money, in which he was the owner of 49% of, is home to Drake and Nicki Minaj, among others, but those two in particular are two of the absolute biggest pop stars of the last 10 years, and they have their own lawsuits going against Young Money, Cash Money, Universal Records, because Baby and Slim and Cash Money got that hundred million and didn't want to pay people what they had coming, or so the various lawsuits allege. Uh, album sales for Nicki Minaj and Drake obviously were huge and lots of money was coming in but Universal Records was keeping that money and not kicking it to young money because there was still the hundred million dollar advance tab that cash money owed. Not long after the April uh, incident with the tour bus there was an arrest made uh, for the shooting. The alleged uh, trigger man was a guy named Pee Wee Roscoe. Now, who was Pee Wee Roscoe? He was Young Thug's tour manager, and he was also a self-professed blood gang member. Jimmy Winfrey is his legal name, and phone calls from him to Birdman directly before and after the attack on Lil Wayne certainly seemed suspicious um, and made it look like Young Thug and Birdman were in on the crime. Have you come out here? and get this money, don't you? This phone conversation was uncovered as part of a separate lawsuit by the tour bus driver, uh, a guy named Alvin Lewis, and he was suing Birdman and Young Thug for the incident. Court documents obtained by TMZ had Alvin Lewis testifying that uh, Birdman offered Jimmy Winfrey, AKA Pee Wee Roscoe, a quarter million dollars and a Porsche to shoot up Lil Wayne's tour bus. Jimmy Winfrey, a.k.a. Pee Wee Roscoe, pled guilty in November of 2015 uh, to the attack on Wayne's tour bus. But who is Pee Wee Roscoe? Turns out he was Young Thug's manager, the artist tapped by Birdman to replace Lil Wayne, who went so far as to title his album The Barter, a play on words from Lil Wayne's The Carter series, um, starting with a B, I guess, to... to uh, represent the Bloods. Now, how did Jimmy Winfrey become Young Thug's manager? How did he get? How did he get into the rap game? Another interesting story. When Clifford T.I. Harris got arrested by the Feds in a sting while trying to buy a bunch of uh, illegal guns, and he was working out a plea deal that ended up being the most lenient. Uh, plea deal I've ever heard of in this type of a case. I mean, normally a convicted multiple felon buying a bunch of guns with silencers, I mean, 10 years at least, maybe 20 years. T.I. ended up with a year and a day um, and a bunch of community service. And part of his community service was a TV show called T.I. Road to Redemption. And on Road to Redemption, T.I. Uh, was like intervening and mentoring in some teenagers lives in the Atlanta area who are getting into trouble and Jimmy Winfrey who went on to become Pee Wee Roscoe who went on to become the guy who pled guilty to shooting up Little Wayne's tour bus was one of the kids that T.I. mentor. It's in your front pocket. Yeah. All right here for me. Get back up against the wall. Yeah. So through T.I., uh, uh, Pee Wee Roscoe gets into the rap game. He ends up being Young Thug's tour manager. And on that night in April of 2015, he, he allegedly fires at Lil Wayne's tour bus. Now, Winfrey ended up taking a 20-year plea deal in November of 2015. But in July of 2018, the Georgia State Supreme Court threw that uh, out and under the grounds that Winfrey had taken a plea deal under uh, pressure, under duress, being threatened 
by the, the, by the judge that if he didn't take the 20 year deal, he would get a lot more time. And I looked up Pee Wee Roscoe on the Georgia Department of Corrections. Right now he's just doing a 10 year sentence for gang participation, which Again, as another tangent, we'll go into sometime else, but in the state of Georgia, apparently, you can get 10 years in prison for participating in a gang, whatever that means. So Pee Wee Roscoe is probably going to be out in a couple years or sooner because he's already been in for four years or so now. Tap you for money and get this money, don't you? Now, maybe Pee Wee Roscoe will have that Porsche waiting for him. But maybe not, because Birdman's track record in paying people isn't too good. I go to Lil Wayne, he does the song with me. And as soon as I get ready to put it out, Cash Money shut it down. They was just like, nah, you didn't get permission from us to do that. And I'm like, wow, like, is it really that serious? Like, I mean, that's, that's kind of ugly of y'all to do that. To understand what's going on with all this violence around Cash Money records, you have to understand where they come from, New Orleans. New Orleans has always been one of the more dangerous cities in America and in the, and in the 1990s it actually uh, peaked, achieved a rate higher than any other municipal entity in U.S. history. And tonight the problem of violent crime is an epidemic in New Orleans. Once again, the Big Easy is headed for a record-setting year for murders. We're four and five times the rate of other cities. If New York City killed at our rate per capita, they'd have between six and 8,000 murders this year. At one point, if you were a black male born in New Orleans around 1990, 1995, if the murder rate had continued at the pace it was at, you would have had a 10% chance of dying by homicide. That's the environment that Cash Money Records and No Limit Records uh, at the same time and before it came out of. The murder rate in New Orleans has already surpassed last year's. New Orleans is not a town that most people think of when you say the word the mafia. But in fact, the bo longtime boss of the New Orleans Mafia, Carlos Marcello, was considered by the FBI in the 60s and 70s to be the most powerful, single most powerful mafioso in the entire United States. More powerful than Carlo Gambino, uh, Genovese, anyone you might have heard of. Yeah, I'm asking you about you. You're supposed to be earning money, according to the information you give the internal revenue, of 20000 approximately a year, yeah. selling tomatoes. Now, where do you sell these tomatoes? Supermarkets and grocery stores, and food stands. All right, would you tell us the last sale that you made to a supermarket? The last sale I made? Yeah. I don't make sales every day. I just, they're custom of mine. He had power over the whole American South, along with Santos Traficante out of Tampa. And in fact, Tampa Bay, Florida, and New Orleans are the two places in America that had Sicilian populations before New York City and had Sicilian organized crime, which grew into the mafia. So cash money records and no limit records being from this, this crime, violent crime capital in New Orleans have seen, unfortunately, a lot of their artists fall victim to violence, be incarcerated for violence, like uh, Master P's brother, uh, uh, C. Murder, and then also the brother of Baby and Slim Williams, the heads of Cash Money, his nickname was Gangsta, and he, BG of the Hot Boys was named after him, Baby Gangsta. He's been doing a life sentence for several murders for quite a long time now. In 1998, at the peak of their success, No Limit Records accounted for 15 or 20 percent of all black music sales in the United States. Like one out of five or six of all the records considered black music was sold by No Limit Records in 1998. That's how dominant they were and Cash Money came up behind them and New Orleans is the place they're both from. So that, that's an interesting uh, melange of, of history right there. Everything I did, I paid my time for, Master P said. Me, I made a change. I left the thugs behind. I don't deal with them anymore. But I'll tell you something. Once you're from the street, you never get that out of your system. Well, recently in interviews, Master P was asked why he didn't kind of team up with Cash Money. I could have brought Cash Money back in the days, you know, but uh, they was from another side of New Orleans, I'm from another side, so it never really, it never really worked, you know, because of the violence. He had a problem 
being connected with the people Cash Money was connected to. Now, he never said any names or specified who that was, but I'm pretty sure it was a family name, the Hankton's. Police are investigating a brutal uptown murder that could be linked to the city's most dangerous criminal. We're talking about Telly Hankton. He suffered multiple gunshot wounds and died at the scene. We have learned that he is the brother of John Matthews, who testified against Telly Hankton at his last trial. And the Hankton's are infamous in New Orleans. A uh, guy named Telly Hankton, a.k.a. Wild Telly, and his chief hitman, Mooney Porter, a few years back were sentenced to, I think, multiple life terms for murders and drug dealing. And way back in the early 90s when Cash Money was starting, a guy named George Cup Hankton, who's now dead, uh, DEA documents show or claim that he provided some of the startup money for Cash Money Records. For the second time this summer, prosecutors will try Telly Hankton. It's one of our most dangerous and wanted subjects. Now behind bars and on trial again for murder. The perpetrator in this case has a lot of connections and he was known as the most wanted criminal in New Orleans area. And if we're going to, you know, clean up New Orleans, we've got to clean up all the crime. So stay tuned for part two of Surviving Cash Money. Subscribe to this channel. You know, I did ads uh, by way of Universal uh, for cash money, uh, especially those of us who provide service to the entertainment industry. Uh, being in a magazine business, you provide um, marketing and promotion advertisement for um, the entertainment industry, for artists and so forth. You know, even though I kicked it with them, you know, uh, Lil Jack was around then. I don't know what the hell happened to Lil Jack, but Lil Jack was like the nuts and bolts of that situation. It kept them, kept them moving. Lil Jack, big up, wherever you are. Um, and uh, yeah, they, they were reputed not to pay their bills. <laughs> I saw Wayne and Baby interacting, you know, obviously, Wayne was uh, more independent because he was an earner to the degree that he was an earner at that point. Wow. Came out through the back. Yeah. Cool though, I'm a soldier. It's great. That's why I know that. So if I survive that, and then I'm surviving everything that's going on around me and that went on around me, I was put here for a reason. And I'm gonna make these platinum plates and I'm gonna teach the game. The dynamic between them was like father and son, but not in an overt way. Like, you know, when I address my sons, it's like, uh, hey, young man, come here. You know, it wasn't like that, you know. Um, with them, it was, uh, it was different. It was more like a looking out kind of thing. You know, it seemed that Wayne was like a prince and, you know, his, his father, the king, was you know, facilitating things for him, but not in a way that he was in his way. He basically was like he was protecting his way or making his way, you know, clearing his way so that he could have his way type of thing. So they had a great dynamic. You know, it was... It was definitely a surprise to me when years later, baby owing Wayne 50 something million dollars or something like that came through. I was surprised that he did whatever it was that he does to Wayne. I mean, he'd had already the reputation between him and uh, um, Everybody else, him and Juvie, and you know, then him and BG, and him and Turk, and um, him and Manny. I figure if him and Manny could have the kind of falling out they had over the over the money, and over you know Manny being properly compensated as per whatever agreement they had made, I guess if they were able to be subject to that, then. It couldn't really surprise me that Wayne would also be subject to it. I mean, the way people do anything is typically the way they do everything and everybody, right? 
it wasn't that much of a surprise to me. I was disappointed, but it wasn't that much of a surprise. I wanted to see a winning dynasty led by uh, black men um, and built by black men and grown and perpetuated um, you know, by them showing that example, you know, showing that we can rock together and build together and grow together. So yeah, that was, that was disappointing for sure. Not surprising. No, it wasn't surprising because, you know, the collective was reputed to not pay their bills. It's not a secret. It's kind of well known. If you don't know, it's because it doesn't matter to you. <laughs> but anybody who half-assed gave a damn is pretty much aware of all the stories and so forth that have come out. Um, but long before those stories came out, became a public thing, long before social media was a thing where that kind of stuff just gets out, you know, into the, to the world or whatever, um, it was understood by those of us in the entertainment industry. They, they would buy new cars, and jewelry, and all this, whatever, whatever, and were known not to pay the bills. They were known not to pay their service providers. I never had the issue. So that's probably why our association stayed as cool as it did for all the years that it did. Um, I mean, even, I mean, I don't see him. I haven't seen him since I think the first baby. I haven't seen him since the first uh, revolt in, in, in Miami. The dynamic has always been the same. Whenever you see one another, it's a genuine greeting. And, you know, we chop it up. We talk like two regular black men. And, um, you know, that's pretty much it. Um, the, the business acumen can't be denied, you know? I mean, if you're gonna frown at the way that uh, he does business, however it is you perceive he does business, because if you've never done business with him, you have no idea how he does business. There's two sides to everything. But, you know, you'd have to have a problem with the way that uh, corporate America does business, because he does business like corporations do business, you know? Uh, they pay who they must. They don't pay people they don't have to pay. And even when they pay people they don't have to pay, they pay them at the pace that fits them, suits them. You know, because it'll never change. Big bank take little bank. Where I come from, that's always been, always will be. You know, it's, a, it's the law of the land. Um, there are a lot of different dynamics, you know, to that whole situation and most of it was based in the culture of New Orleans. I've spent a little time here and there over the years in, um, in New Orleans, mostly with cats like that. Um, I, not, I got a lot of friends who I've made over the years from New Orleans and every bit of what Cash Money did or how Cash Money moved, that is, that's the New Orleans way, you know? Like, uh, you, you, gotta, you gotta be able to hold your own you got to be able to hold your own. If you can't hold your own, you know, nobody's above the rules, right? It's a dirty game. In any case, um, I have a great deal of regard for Wayne. It, it, really, a great deal of regard for Wayne. Uh, he's a smart young brother, sharp, you know, truly a good person to, to my knowledge. I don't know differently than that. Um, I don't side with one over the other. You know, they did what they did. It worked while it worked. When it stopped working, um, as relationships sometimes do, you know, somebody comes up with the short end of the deal. You know, somebody's got to win, right? Somebody's got to take a loss. Either way, you know, they're both better off than 95% of, of the people in this country, especially people of color. I don't know what that says in terms of, you know, the rights and wrongs of how their business is conducted, but things work the way they work and not the way you think they should work. So, you know, who's to say?
Who's to say who's wrong or who's right, or who's bad, or who's good? Shit is all relative, man. You know, you can't take away the history that Cash Money has made. Cash Money has made tremendous history and made a way for many, many, many people um, that they otherwise might not have even considered. You know, they changed a lot of lives. So, you know, I salute that and I salute them. And I will them nothing but the best going forth. And who knows? You know, money make the world go around. So you never know. You might see, you know, the hot boys in full fruition. Manny doing what he did and, you know, baby leading the charge. Universal Music Group had advanced Birdman and Cash Money $100 million. Young Money Records, which was Lil Wayne's uh, sub-record label under Cash Money, in which he was the owner of 49% of, is home to Drake and Nicki Minaj, among others, but those two in particular are two of the absolute biggest pop stars of the last 10 years, and they have their own lawsuits going against Young Money, Cash Money, Universal Records, because Baby and Slim and Cash Money got that $100 million and didn't want to pay people what they had coming, or so the various lawsuits allege. Uh, album sales for Nicki Minaj and Drake obviously were huge, and lots of money was coming in, but Universal Records was keeping that money and not kicking it to young money. As most people know, rapper BG, formerly of the Hot Boys, is currently serving a 14-year prison term for weapons charges. Now, just exactly how he got in that predicament is an interesting story. November 3rd, 2009, Christopher Dorsey, AKA BG, was pulled over in a Chevy Tahoe by the New Orleans police in a routine, quote unquote, traffic stop. He just so happened to be with two other guys in a car full of guns. The Tahoe uh, BG was driving had been stolen from an Avis rental car outlet. The two men with him, Demonde Pollard and Gerard Fettison, worked for Wild Telly Hankton, who at the time had been declared public enemy number one by New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landrieu. There were three guns found in the car, two were stolen. Pollard tried to say the guns were his. He ended up getting a 30-month prison term for uh, sort of obstructing justice in that case. BG went to jail. He already had a lot of felonies, so he was facing a lot of time. Not long after he went to jail, he was recorded on the jail phone calling Fettison, and he referenced the fact that he and Walter Mooney Porter, who was Wild Telly Hankton's chief hitman, both of them have been convicted of many murders and are both serving life sentences right now, that he and Mooney Porter had recently tried to shoot two people in a drive-by on behalf of Telly Hankton. You know what I'm saying? I just got sick of it. And one point in time, this nigga been here like about, about 35, 40 calls. You know what I'm saying? You, see, you know what I'm saying? Ain't like four, five. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but you got one call that calls more than my house. Gerard Fettison, uh, the man who received that phone call, ended up getting 22 years as part of the Hankton Rico case. Uh, for obstructing justice and possession of firearms. Now, why such a long sentence for Fettison? Well, the federal government presented uh, a lot of evidence that Fettison was also one of Telly Hankton's shooters, that he had been involved in several attempted homicides uh, over the years. So that's why he got 22 years, and that's the guy who BG was riding in the car with, and that's one of the first people he called when he got to jail and discussed past crimes. So it appears that BG really was a hot boy, working for, at the time, New Orleans' most violent criminal organization, possibly even as a shooter. It's unclear when BG will be released, possibly as early as next year. Uh, uh, prison photos of him show him looking healthy, happy, uh, and he'll probably be coming home soon. He has already been down for 10 plus years. When he was just 12 years old in 1992, BG got signed to uh, then up-and-coming New Orleans-based Cash Money Records. 
a label that by the end of the decade would be scooped up by mega media conglomerate universal media group and, and it grew to be become one of the most prominent labels uh, as, as hip hop, as rap went from one of the most popular things in pop culture to what it is now, the dominant uh, force and source of inspiration in kind of global pop culture. And BG's 1999 hit, Bling Bling, is really kind of a seminal song because uh, the word bling and the phrase bling bling is just a part of normal American lexicon these days. Even the kind of people that watch Fox News say bling. And it's interesting to think that that phrase was coined by a guy who really was from deep in the trenches of the New Orleans streets, according to the federal government and according to what he's been convicted of. Now, BG grew up in the same uptown New Orleans neighborhood as Wild Telly Hankton and his family, and Cash Money Records founders Brian Baby Williams and Slim Williams were linked to the Hankton family by the DEA very early on, and the DEA claims that they got money from uh, Telly's older cousin or uncle, a guy named George Cup Hankton, as part of the initial cash influx to start Cash Money Records. Not the only money, but some of the money. Now, whether that's true, I mean, the Williams brothers never got charged in anything, so who knows? So in the early 2000s, uh, Cash Money, at what appeared to be the height of their success, a lot of people started jumping ship. And BG was the first one to go. And then Manny Fresh, who made all the beats from all the seminal uh, hits we remember from back then, bling bling, back that ass up, many other things. Uh, he left in a dispute over getting paid and it seemed like cash money was going down, but as we know, their biggest days were ahead of them. Little Wayne uh, rose up to be, for a while, you know, maybe the biggest rapper in the world in terms of popularity. And Little Wayne went on to have his own record label, Young Money, that that uh, just signed Drake and Nicki Minaj, and Drake is one of the biggest pop stars of the last 20 years, period. And you, you can't look at a Drake song without seeing the direct line back to the Hot Boys, and at least in BG's case, uh, the Hot Boys really were that, and were involved in uh, pretty serious stuff with people like the Hankins, who were as wild as it comes. A wild Telly Hankton, who ended up in 2016 being convicted on a bunch of uh, uh, racketeering and corrupt organization, RICO charges. Uh, he and many of the other Hankton family members were given long federal prison terms, but Telly Hankton's not in federal prison. He was also convicted along with some of his hitmen like Walter Mooney Porter of murders by the state of Louisiana, and he's currently doing a life sentence in the state of Louisiana. George Cup Hankton uh, uh, cast a large shadow over the New Orleans drug trade from his Holly Grove neighborhood, which is where Little Wayne is also from. On December 7th of 2007, George Cup Hankton was gunned down in the Girttown neighborhood of New Orleans. Years prior to his murder in 2007, he mentored Wild Telly, who was his younger cousin, in the ways of the game. According to those same DEA informants, Baby, Birdman Williams, and Cup Hankton were especially close. One of the murders Wild Telly Hankton's doing his Louisiana life uh, bid for was revenge for the people that killed his older cousin, Cup. For the second time this summer, prosecutors will try Telly Hankton. It's one of our most dangerous and wanted subjects. Now behind bars and on trial again for murder, Hankton is accused of running down Darnell Stewart on Claiborne Avenue in Central City and shooting him in the face. Back in the early 90s when Cup Hankton was still alive and Telly Hankton was young, uh, the two of them were actually observed and recorded by the DEA hanging out with a lot of different people, but two of the people they hung out with a lot were Baby and Slim founders of Cash Money Records. Perhaps the whole thing about uh, them getting money from the Hankins just came from the DEA seeing them together. Maybe it's not true. Uh, in the world of entertainment, whether it's Hollywood movies or rap music, 
And this goes all the way back to the founding of Hollywood, which was founded by predominantly Jewish gangsters from New York, Cleveland, who came out west to start this new business, the movie business. Uh, gangsters and entertainers have always been tied together. I mean, there's only, for young guys who are out hanging out in the nightlife of any city, who has money? Entertainers, athletes, and gangsters. So the Williams brothers definitely were friends with the Hanktons, who were at one time New Orleans' most feared uh, crime group. Does it mean they really got money from the Hanktons? Maybe, but maybe not. Now, Cup Hankton was just as violent uh, in his day as Wild Telly. He was arrested and charged with multiple homicides, but he beat them all, and then he was eventually killed in 2007. Cash Money Records is, is in ascension. They're big deal. The Hanktons are still on the streets, so if they did invest money with Cash Money, uh, I mean, it seems like they would have got enough back to get out of the streets, but Telly Hankton was known at this time to only sell quarter and half kilos and up. Uh, DEA informants said that he would uh, buy five or six kilos a couple times a month and then distribute them uh, around the neighborhood in uptown New Orleans. He never used cell phones. As Cash Money's first incarnation was starting to fall apart, the Hanktons got into a war with gangsters uh, Darnell Durney Stewart and Jesse Tutu Reed. By 2007, it was an all-out war. Durney Stewart and Tutu Reed were arrested for Cup Hankton's murder, but like most murder cases in New Orleans at that time, they just sat in jail and the charges got dropped and they were back out on the streets and they were back at war with the Hanktons, now led by Cup Hankton's younger cousin, Wild Telly. Everyone knows who Cash Money Records is, but not everyone knows the interesting and perhaps shady past. Ronald and Brian Birdman Williams being uh, two of the most recognized faces in the rap business. Now, although the label has been one of the greatest rap success stories, its artists have had their fair shares of lows, including criminal charges, shootouts, beef between the label head and artists, with Birdman in particular being at the forefront of a lot of these um, accusations of not paying money. And Cash Money Records has also had quite a few artists come and go over time, including from death. In the last 30 years, there's been a half dozen Cash Money Records artists who were murdered. That's right, Cash Money Records almost 30 years old. Now, like many other stories of people traveling the roads to riches and freedoms, came with a high price. Lil Slim was part of the first wave of Cash Money Arts. From 1993 to 95, he released three albums for the label. He was the first artist to leave for contractual dispute reasons, but he wouldn't be the last. Another of Cash Money's early big artists was Pimp Daddy, real name Edgar Givens. He was a pioneer to the New Orleans bounce sound. In 94, Pimp Daddy was shot in the face by his girlfriend's brother. Shortly after the release of his debut album, Still Pimpin', he died. Givens was only 18 at the time of his death, but because of his influence, Lil Wayne actually went by Shrimp Daddy in his early career and even had a style similar to Pimp before deciding on the moniker Lil Wayne and developing his own flavor. 96 and 97 was a dark period for early cash money. Now, Lil Wayne, who was a child star in the making at the time, shot himself in the chest. Uh, supposedly it was an accident, but uh, as the years have passed, many people have come out and said it was a suicide attempt. Uh, a, a 1999 MTV interview, Little Wayne said it was an accident. If you cocked it, someone's already in the chamber. I didn't know it had been cocked. Oh, well. So I'm just like playing, like some, you know, I ain't know though, but yeah, that's, that was crazy, yeah. Where'd you, where'd you hit yourself? In the chest, right there. there. Wow. Came out through the back. Man. I'm a soldier. In 1996, Birdman had a feud with one of the label's artists, Yellow Boy of UNLV. 
Now, Yellow Boy allegedly pistol whipped Birdman, and then Yellow Boy was found dead. Now, Birdman, you know, rumors flew that he was involved in killing Yellow Boy, but there's no hard facts to back up those accusations outside of a few subliminal rap lines from various artists connected to Cash Money Records. And officially, most newspaper articles claim that Yellow Boy died from a drug deal gone wrong, though Terrence Gangster Williams, Birdman's brother, who's in prison for a whole bunch of murders, was still free at that time, so who can say? When America as a whole got wind of cash money, they were almost already 10 years in the game. Locally, they'd accumulated some regional success around Louisiana, selling tapes from the trunk of their very own cars. In the early 90s, they'd acquired BG and Lil Wayne to their roster as baby gangsters. That was the group they were called. And a few years later, when Birdman signed Juvenile, who was already kind of popping, and Turk, and connected them with the and connected them with the baby gangsters, he created the Hot Boys. And that's when they began to reach commercial success. In 1998, Cash Money, with the help of various people, signed a $30 million deal with Universal Records. The deal was especially sweet. Unlike many other artists, Cash Money was able to acquire 85% of the royalties, half of the publishing rights, and they were able to keep ownership of their own masters. Juvenile's hit single, Ha, is what really brought Cash Money to the attention of uh, rap fans all across America, and his debut album, 400 Degrees, went many times platinum and solidified Cash Money's name as a hip-hop uh, powerhouse. During this time of su early success, Cash Money's songs were almost solely produced by Manny Fresh, who ended up leaving because he felt he didn't get paid. More on that in part five. At the end of 1999, Birdman's brother Terrence, who I also I mentioned earlier, Gangsta, was sentenced to 250 years, connected to criminal enterprise and conspiracy to solicit murder. He was also suspected of committing many murders himself. Terrence was a member of the notorious New Orleans crew, the Hot Boys, which is actually where the rap group got their name from. He was considered by some to be the muscle of the record label, and he was also a big reason they were able to get off the ground financially, some say. The Hot Boys was formed from Gangsta Williams, Dooney Sterling, and Mosquito. Now, all of them are dead except for Gangsta, and he's serving the 250-year sentence. Two years after Juvenile's big debut on Cash Money, he left and formed his own label. The issue he stated was the same reason most Cash Money uh, artists have left, was that he wasn't getting paid what he was supposed to be. Juvenile claimed that Baby and Slim took most of the earnings and left the artist with scraps. Now, during this time, BG, Baby Gangster, was battling a heroin addiction that he had had from his early teenage years. He also began to distance, him, distance himself from cash money. Christopher Dorsey, better known as local rapper BG, pled guilty today to gun charges. Dorsey admitted that on two occasions, including on this YouTube video, he possessed guns, despite being a three-time convicted felon. He also pled guilty to obstruction of justice for trying to get an associate to claim ownership of the guns. Dorsey will remain behind bars until the sentencing in March. Like many other artists of Cash Money Records, BG claimed that after two certified platinum and gold albums, the Williams brothers refused to pay what he had coming. In that same year, Turk, the last of the hot boys other than Lil Wayne, he split from the label. And he went after Cash Money with a $1.3 million lawsuit for unpaid royalties. Uh, Turk ended up shooting a cop by accident when he was in a Memphis dope house and he got raided. So Lil Wayne was the last man standing on cash money. Juvenile eventually settled out of court with cash money and then surprisingly put out another album with them and he got half of the record sales as part of the settlement. And since 2014, Juvenile and the label have seemed to be on good terms. So I guess baby goes by the old saying in business, it's cheaper to pay a lawyer than to pay you. But if you, if you fight them in court and get your money, I guess they come to terms. Meeting Wayne at age eight, Birdman became somewhat of a surrogate father to little Wayne when his stepfather was killed. Um, he signed to cash money as a preteen and they developed him, sort of like a Motown act. Following the murder of his stepfather, Birdman took on even more of a father figure role and they began kissing each other on the mouth. This is 
well documented. Birdman also, in an interview, said he had a groupie perform oral sex on Lil Wayne when he was 11, which is obviously a child molestation. After years and years of music with Cash Money Records, Lil Wayne eventually started to uh, want to jump ship. <clears throat> and uh, he got into a dispute where he sued the label for $51 million, refused to put out his final album, The Carter Five. Um, and then, of course, Drake and Nicki Minaj and others were signed to Wayne's uh, sub-label, Young Money, and uh, the whole drama involving uh, Young Thug and etc., which I talk about in part one of Surviving Cash Money, uh, played out. Recently, Lil Wayne and, and uh, Cash Money apparently came to some sort of settlement, uh, though in the meantime, Wayne's tour bus was shot at. A guy named Pee Wee Roscoe, Young Thug's uh, uh, tour manager, was, was convicted and then unconvicted. Uh, I talk about that in part one of Surviving Cash Money. In 2018, Lil Wayne uh, finally released the Carter Five, which went on to have great commercial success. Here's a list of murders of cash money artists over the years, a partial list. 1996, Pimp Dead. 1997, Kilo G, dead at the age of 20, murdered. 1997, Yellow Boy, gunned down. 2010, Magnolia Shorty, killed in New Orleans. 2017, very recently, BTY Youngin, who was a new signee, gunned down. 2018, Young Greatness, cash money artist, gunned down. Now, New Orleans is a very violent place. Unfortunately, the uh, United States is a very violent place for young black males in general. So certainly, the deaths of all these uh, young men who were signed to cash money records does not mean or imply that Cash Money Records had anything to do with it. Subscribe, get ready for part five, Cash Money Records, and our future music series, American Dope. Not long after the April uh, incident with the tour bus, there was an arrest made uh, for the shooting. The alleged uh, trigger man was a guy named Pee Wee Roscoe. Now, who was Pee Wee Roscoe? He was Young Thug's tour manager.